Okay, uh, good morning. So, what do you do today? Well, again, what I said before, uh, we will be talking about the cycloaddition reactions. And in the first few minutes, maybe uh, roughly about 15 minutes, we will talk about uh, the definitions, the notations, and then uh, just a bit of a revision of what we did uh, last time. Okay. Uh, just uh, to clarify the definition of cyclo addition, I think all of you know what is the meaning of cyclo addition. The name implies the uh, what is the meaning? Cyclo addition is a chemical reaction, right? Where two components add. No, it could be more. It could be three also. So at least two component add to form an adduct, which is uh, adduct or which is known as cyclo adduct. Means all the the number of the atoms of the starting materials uh, is preserved in the product. That means, there is no change in the molecular formula uh, in going from the starting point to the end product. Okay. That means, no small molecule or big molecule is being expelled or excluded from the product. That means, the total number of uh, atoms involved in the starting materials would be same as the total number of the atoms in the product. That is number one. Number two uh, the definitions could be these uh, cycloaddition reactions are those reactions in chemical term where two new sigma bonds are being formed, at least two new sigma bond. There are cases where you can have three or four uh, sigma bonds uh, uh, are being formed, but um, normally uh, two sigma bonds are being formed. Okay. So, that, that means that, that covers all kinds of these cycloadditions you have come across so far and the notations are little different in many cases. Uh, in synthetic chemistry there is no notation and um, mechanistic chemistry there is the different notations. Okay. The popular ones most of you know I think uh, when you talk about the, the most popular one is uh, 4 plus 2 cycloaddition right 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction and uh, next popular one uh, next popular one uh, 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. So, uh, you go on like this then there are uh, of course, the little less popular is 2 plus 2 then uh, there are uh, 4 plus 3 uh, 4 plus 3 then uh, 5 plus 2 and then uh, what else. Any, anything else there is also there are quite a few more and so what do we do uh, we name them uh, higher order cycloaddition reactions higher order cycloaddition reactions okay but uh, at the same time you have to know what these numbers mean this is important when you do the simple notation uh, actually these um, when you talk about this notation in this class we talk about the synthetic chemistry synthetic chemistry in synthetic chemistry these numbers actually uh, represents the number of atoms of the reacting chains not the number of the atoms of the starting material number of the atoms of the reacting chains. Okay. Uh, for example, all of us know right this is the uh, this is the typical diels solder reaction diels solder reaction and uh, the product here. So, here is a cyclohexene uh, and this is the new sigma bond and this is the new sigma bond. So, cyclo total number and total number of the atoms on the left hand side is equal to the total number of the atoms on the right hand side everything is ok new two new sigma bonds are being formed cyclic compound is being formed and this 4 actually denotes the 4 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 that means this 4 um, refers, uh, the refers to the number of the atoms and uh, of, but uh, then if you are talking about the mechanism of the pericyclic reactions then this 4 actually refers to the number of the pi electrons the number of the pi electrons. Uh, let me give you one more example that would clarify you let us say um, uh, 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions. Uh, I think all of us know what it is ozone and then uh, if you react with uh, olefin uh, first it forms the mole ozonite and right mole ozonite. So, what is this how do you classify this reaction? This reaction is classified as 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions 
3 plus 2 cyclodecimals. Alternatively, okay, we will talk about the alternative ones, but uh, uh, in this case, 3 refers to the number of the atoms of the reacting chain 1, 2, 3, and uh, this in this case, the other one is 2. But in me mechanistic, chem me mechanistic uh, chemistry, or you can say when you talk about the mechanism of the pericyclic reactions, this should be considered as 4 plus 2 cyclodecimal reaction. Reason being there are four, uh, 6 4 uh, in this uh, skeleton you have component you have 4 electrons in this component you have 2 electrons that means we count the number of electrons. Okay. So, these are the definitions and then uh, there are some other things like um, uh, this is a very uh, next to cycle 4 plus 2 3 plus 2 also is very important it has uh, another name I do not know whether you know or not uh, it has another name what is the name uh, 1 3 uh, dipolar addition in 1, one, one 3 dipolar cycle addition. 1 3 dipolar cycle addition reactions. This is just because uh, the other thing is always two component two electron components. So, in most cases this this is a very versatile method and so in the last class actually what we talked about we talked about uh, both the reactions 4 plus 2 and 3 plus 2. So, what we do today we will have little bit of the assorted examples to show you the power of these reactions the nature of the products and also uh, you have to mentally work out some of the answers of the problems I give you here. Okay. And <coughs> then uh, when I talk about these reactions the, there are two important points. The first point is that the heterocyclic can be used as the dienophile dino, or diene that is important. Okay, there are two ways that means you can make use of heterocycles and you can build up the heterocycles by cyclodicin reactions. That means <coughs> cyclodicin reactions can be uh, used in two different manners. Okay. Uh, in one case, uh, in one case, uh, the they can be component of the cyclodicin reactions. Other case, the result of cyclodicin reaction could be heterocycles. That means you can construct them. Okay. And um, uh, so, uh, if you go to my note previously, you will just uh, uh, see. Uh, Mm, let us say the, um, uh, most of the examples there you can work out and I uh, will just uh, pick up only one of the examples where this uh, heterocycles or uh, or, or, an het or sorry a, a heterocyclic molecule has been used to construct an heterocyclic molecule. Like uh, this one is a case uh, in the, um, the synthesis of vitamin B 6 where you start with uh, a compound called name oxazole. Good oxazole. Oxazole is now you have a substituted oxazole. Oxazole and then uh, and if you react to it uh, this diester malleate. Okay. And uh, uh, in my class, uh, E stands for actually an ester group. Normally aliphatic ester, methyl ester, ethyl ester. So then you use a Lewis acid. And in this case, uh, neodymium uh, uh, triflet. So uh, you get uh, directly uh, the spiridine nucleus. Spiridine nucleus. Okay. By the way, if you have any questions, you can stop me, interrupt me, uh, ask questions. It's not a matter. Uh, okay, it doesn't interfere this recording here. Um, uh, so. And now you see, now you have to basically you have to uh, uh, try to read this equation. What is this equation? You start from a heterocycle, 5 member heterocycles as all, then do an uh, dill solder reaction, and uh, mentally you have to work on the intermediate. The intermediate would that means uh, you know, pericyclic reactions, the components remain as it is without any rearrangement, only a connections are being made and um, uh, through the ends though. When the cyclodicin reactions takes place, actually you have to concentrate on the ends, not in betweens. Okay, then you have to reorganize the electrons. So, um, then the, uh, the rest of the things remains as it is, and then uh, this you have this uh, ethyl group here, and uh, then you can go on and uh, do this uh, sort of uh, rearrangement eventually. So this is that means it's a case of an heterocycle being used for the construction of the heterocycle actually it shows the dual purposes of heterocycles uh, cycloadditions in um, heterocyclic chemistry the, so likewise there are uh, quite interestingly there are many examples i'll just uh, for giving you 
some of the ideas to um, uh, how the heterocycles are used. So, what I will do? I will uh, pick up uh, a few selected examples. Uh, let us say this one is a very popular example in heterocyclic chemistry. Uh, sometimes it is called Bogar chemistry. Bogar means Del Bogar, a scientist uh, in California, a script research institute. He exclusively works on uh, tetragen molecules. Tetragen molecules. Uh, when I say tetragen molecules, you must have something in your mind. What does it mean? Uh, <coughs> it means uh, tetragen molecule means uh, you have four nitrogens, of course, and azine means uh, when I say you have, let's say when I say zol means basically a five membered ring. So azine means so you have a uh, six six membered rings. So uh, okay, so just uh, I'll give you an example uh, how it works and. This is a molecule here, and uh, you see uh, this is actually exclusively used by uh, Del Bogar. There are many other um, who have used, and once again, uh, I write E here. If you uh, mix up with, and uh, let's say a triple bond. So uh, if you don't know the uh, what will happen then it is very difficult to actually make out, very difficult to make out, but, uh, but since we know that a tetrazine uh, is a diene, is a diene, is a diene. So, what happens actually it first undergoes diel solder reactions. So, uh, diel solder reaction. So, what you do uh, you first find out the ends, identify the ends, ends of the diene part. So, in this case let us say uh, the top part uh, or sorry or the, or the bottom part is the diene part. Okay. So, that means, the, the, this end would add to the uh, electrophile uh, sorry dinophile in this case it is this right. So, uh, then uh, rest remains as it is and so, uh, then you reorganize the bond according to the valency. So, you get to this sort of compound here. So, that this is basically called diel solder adduct okay, or 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Right. So, what next? What next actually does not stop here if you uh, keep on uh, hitting this reaction uh, mixture uh, eventually uh, one can uh, sorry on nitrogen uh, one can see uh, there is a nice driving force here. What is the driving force? Uh, the driving loss of nitrogen loss of nitrogen and so uh, what you will find uh, you will find a, again now a diazine, it is a diazine product, diazine product. So, E here, E here, and then uh, A R and A R. Okay. So, once again, this is in a set, although it is a heterocyclic compound, but you are making a heterocyclic molecule, um, heterocyclic molecule by the application of the cycloaddition reactions, so, very useful reactions and this is now this has a name also, this sequence also, also has a name and uh, some of you probably know that because uh, if you just again go back uh, this sort of reaction uh, is known as uh, uh, Alder uh, Rickert reaction, Alder Rickert reactions, Alder Rickert reactions. Okay. What it means? Uh, so basically, it is a com combination of diel solder reactions and retro diel solder reactions. It is a combination of uh, D A plus all of you know uh, retro diel solder is abbreviated as R D A. Okay. So, uh, in fact, um, we are planning to make use of these reactions in our lab and uh, this uh, the beauty of this reaction is that this tetragene can be made from a very simple molecule. Can you guess by looking at the structure? Eh? Very simple molecule. One of the tetragene, the starting material, the starting uh, starting material.
So, that means, it is a very highly symmetric molecule though. So, the, in organic chemistry most of you know the identifying the right starting material is very important. So, that means, you have to have a nice correlation with the structure with the available starting material. In fact, towards the end of the class, um, I would summarize probably the available nitrogen sources. Available nitrogen is not is nitrous acid, potassium nitrate, etcetera, what we need for other things, where it is the ni nitrogen source for the synthesis of heterocycles. Can you name any uh, very quickly? Uh, I mean, you have sufficient background in heterocyclic chemistry. Uh, can you name five different nitrogen source sources? Which uh, supply nitrogen for the synthesis of heterocycles? Urea. One of them is urea. The other five. I I, I require only five, not many. Okay, hydrogen. I will accept. Ammonia accept. Fine. Two more. Uh, nitro. Nitroso compound, I will take, but not okay, they have limited use. Okay. So, like this, you know, so if you summarize, if you summarize, you know, you will find you know that uh, heterocyclic chemistry is very easy. In fact, one of our teachers in the science college, uh, Professor A.K. and probably many of you do not know, I, I still regard him, he is still alive, and uh, he was also at IIT, uh, our department as a faculty member, and uh, he used to teach like this only. Okay, identify you make a synthetic pool of the nitrogen compounds from there you pick up and try to correlate with those uh, pools with the final product and see how synthetic uh, or because heterocyclic chemistry in many times you know in many occasions you will find it is very boring. Okay, same thing again and again and this when you uh, when it is done it is so easy and uh, so and there is no stereochemistry all the molecules are flat, but they are useful. Okay. So, we will any case, but as you go on, we will just find out the uh, kinds of the nitrogen sources you need for uh, constructing heterocyclic molecules. Okay. And uh, <coughs> so, coming to the answer, it is nothing but glycine, glycine ester. If you glycine ester add nitrous acid, what happens? Let us let us say you have uh, ethyl glycinate, ethyl glycinate. Uh, you, you, if you go to the back uh, slides of my lectures, you will find the answers there. Uh, ethyl glycine, then uh, treat with sodium nitride HCl, you get the ethyl diazoacetate. Ethyl diazoacetate. Okay. Uh, ethyl diazoacetate under basic conditions undergo dimerizations. So, that means, uh, let us say this portion, this portion comes from the um, glycinate. right? Nitrous acid gives one more nitrogen, so you get this uh, diazo acetate, and then if you dimerize them, you get to this compound. Okay, it's quite easy, quite easy to make, and then aromatize. So, <coughs> so these are the things uh, actually we talked about. Then we have shown the applications, but what we do today, uh, just a little bit of the variations of the diels solder reactions. Variations of the diels solder reactions mean uh, when you talk about uh, the regular diels solder reaction, some people try to say uh, this is called uh, C diels solder reaction, CDA means carbon diels solder reactions. So, then uh, of course, uh, there is no nitrogen diels solder reactions. So, what we call? We call um, uh, HDA. So, HDA in this case we will call uh, hetero diels solder reactions, hetero diels solder reactions. So, there are many of you like say we have already uh, shown you RDA. So, that means, uh, there are plenty of uh, objective, uh, adjectives right. In this case it is retro diels solder any other uh, these are all uh, names you know organic chemistry almost regularly use we call uh, IMDA. IMDA is a very useful reaction. I will give you more examples actually today. IMDA actually intramolecular diels solder reaction. So, uh, so, that means intramolecular intramolecular diels solder reaction. So, like likewise there is one more. So, one more is there uh, E I E D diels solder reaction. What is this? Inverse 
Elect so all of you know then. Okay, basically. <laughs> So these are all different kinds. Okay, there are different kinds of reactions, and that means uh, if you have a known reactions, you want to extend it to the tray. We talk about a little bit of this example of this uh, um, HDA. HDA there are actually three different versions. HDA means one of these could be that means um, you put heteroatom, heteroatom. So this is one of the case. In this case, you have placed nitrogen in the dinophile. There are other possibilities. There are so many other possibilities. Let's say you have another possibility that you place the double bond, uh, sorry, nitrogen in the diene component, and then uh, of course you, uh, you change the uh, positions. You change the position, and then you, you can see all kinds of. Of course, this uh, all of you can guess uh, what could be the product. Product would be a cyclic one, and then uh, with two uh, two new sigma bonds and the electrons organized accordingly. So, like this uh, I think uh, all of you can write the structure. Mm, uh, so, this word uh, would give you you see here in all cases all cases the end product is uh, or end products are heterocycles end products are heterocycles right. So, now question is uh, I mean in principle everybody can write this that is not a big problem, but what do you need to know? then which one is phys more feasible or which one is more likely to uh, take place uh, in the lab that is important and or, or what are the problems or drawbacks in this sort of reactions. Any guess what could be the problems that is you have to be you have sufficient you have been sufficiently knowledgeable about this chemistry. Uh, if you look at uh, this is also it has this uh, in this particular case. This uh, this is a basically a class belonging to HDA, heterodial solder, but it has a name also. It has a name also. It has a name also na known as iminodial solder. I think iminodial solder means basically you guess that ship's base. It's not ship's base del solder. We call iminodial solder. And if you are little careful, uh, then uh, it has also a name associated with this reaction. What is the reaction is called Povarov reaction? It's a Russian name, of course. Uh, so Povarov reaction. That means Povarov reaction is basically a, a four plus two cycloaddition reaction uh, used or utilized for the construction of heterocycles. Heterocycles. We'll have a uh, few examples. We'll have few examples. Um, but uh, but uh, before I go to the next uh, one, uh, you have to just sit down and think about. And what are the difficulties actually? In fact, I was not knowing till uh, my friend started doing uh, work on this immunodial solder reaction in 1980 at Rensselaer Polytechnic at PI, and uh, when he started uh, making azard ions. Any idea? Uh, what is the, what's, what could be the problems? See, many of you have been studying the biological chemistry, right? In biological chemistry, there are uh, again only a handful of reactions, not many reactions, uh, many reactions. But one of the uh, fastest possible reaction is what? First, one of the first reactions, other than acid-base reactions. Huh? Hydrogen? No. From where? Biological organic reactions, bioorganic reactions. Let us say. This is important. If you go to the, and the, this actually gives uh, this concept actually uh, gives rise to many many important reactions. If you can identify, if, if you can rank the reactions in terms of the uh, activation energy, we don't call activation energy or we don't give the numbers, but we can say this is faster, this is slower, this is uh, you know uh, slowest, this is fastest, you know that kind of thing we can do. Like uh, one of the choices to look at any organic reaction is that acid base transform. Okay, then next one is the isomerizations possibly it could be one of the very first reactions. Uh, actually uh, many of people do not know ship's base formation even in water is one of the very first reactions very first reactions. So, and uh, this concept has given rise to many multi component reactions see in most of the multi component reactions you, you must have heard actually one of the, the very first point is basically the ship's base formation and uh, we will see some of the reactions here. 
So, the, what does it mean? It means that shift bases, shift bases are not very stable. Uh, uh, again, I often ask these questions in, uh, uh, in research seminars. You know, many times many research scholars, you know, they will show okay, this shift base has uh, this proton here, this proton here, has this IR value here. I said, how did you purify? So he, uh, he said, he did not purify. Uh, some some people without knowing, he said, no, I will chromatograph. You cannot do it. You can you cannot uh, do the chromatography on the shift base because on silica gel, this breaks down. I mean, maybe in starting material was very pure. When you pass through it, silica gel, you know, half of this is, uh, is, is so fast. That means that's what you have to know. So that is, it is basically drawback in this uh, azure del solder reactions, azure del solder reactions, or immuno del solder reactions. So you have to have some rough idea about, you know, that which one is more feasible. We can write three different versions, especially the one the on the right uh, is not uh, very popular. But again, uh, without isolation, you can engage them in the Dilsoder reactions. So, uh, likewise you know um, uh, we will have a little bit of examples, um, little bit of uh, for, uh, just uh, very quickly. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Let us say you have an aromatic uh, compound, now um, this is uh, again a shift base, a shift base here. So, benzaldehyde and aniline then uh, we took uh, let us say we take uh, cyclopentadiene, cyclopentadiene <coughs> so uh, what, what can you expect out of this let us first let us say we, uh, as if we do not know anything about these reactions in this case the uh, because the compounds are aromatic the shift space is fairly stable. In fact, you can isolate. You can just do the reaction, just boil the two, uh, do not do anything, just boil the two, they, they will come out uh, from the reaction as the solid. Then, if, and then if you put this, nothing happens. Well, the, uh, under the presence of uh, Lewis acid, in this case, uh, uh, indium chloride, indium chloride. So, oh, what, what is expected out here? It is basically Lewis acid. Now, you have to, I mean, independently uh, predict. What, what could be the outcome of this reaction? Let us say, uh, I mean, since I have been talking about the dill solder reaction, etcetera, you can think about the dill solder reactions. Suppose, uh, let us uh, postpone the thinking to dill solder for some time, uh, but uh, let us think uh, otherwise. What do you expect? If the shift base is not sufficiently reactive, you can expect a dimerization of the cyclic line because at room temperature it dies. So, that means, you have to have some reference, that means, this is the reference knowledge. The cyclopentadiene is sufficiently stable at uh, room temperature, but under a certain time at room temperature it dimerizes. So, if that is so, that means, you can guess that butadiene would be fairly stable. Okay. So, likewise you know okay. and uh, the product here and so, <coughs> product here was, is basically uh, a dual solder uh, product, and so in this case, mm, uh, the double one of the double bonds, one of the double bonds of mm, one of the double bonds of this. Uh, I think something is wrong here. Uh, uh, my note, it, it, um, right? One of the double bonds. Uh, that means, uh, of the benzene ring, this aniline part, aniline part would be engaged in the dilute solar reactions. So, that means, uh, uh, 2 and plus 2 and this 2, right. So, that means, uh, so for the, this one that uh, shifts base part and one of these you know, double bond of these would undergo reactions and eventually that means, uh, you will have a kind of a double bond up here, right. And, but all of us know that this cannot be a stable, so it undergoes, it undergoes uh, isomerization, uh, and isomerization. So what you'll have, uh, you'll have a real uh, polycyclic, um, uh, or you, sorry, uh, real polycyclic, and uh, or so you can say you can say it's a quinoline derivative uh, is being formed in this, and as usual, 
uh, as usual uh, the stereochemistry uh, in Diels Holder reactions or in all kinds of pericyclic reactions you will have these uh, the stereochemistry is uh, well defined well defined I mean, the C addition and all these things. And <coughs> so likewise I will just give you one more example uh, this is a This is again a uh, shift base. Now, if you uh, react this, you see, you see here ethyl vinyl ether, ethyl vinyl ether, ethyl vinyl ether. So, what do you expect? See, we have been talking about this heterocyclic chemistry, etc., etc., well, 4 plus 2. But, uh, but you have to uh, once again you have to forget about this and start from the very scratch. Uh, if we have two components, I mean uh, this is I talk about in the also in my synthetic chemistry um, class also I talk about when a reaction are when a reaction is being done or rather or is proposed or uh, you are supposed to predict the outcome of a reaction where do you start from you just classify them classify them in four different five different categories acid based reactions, uh, light catalyzed reactions, thermal reactions and oxidation reductions not many right. Do you remember? No, you do not remember. Okay. All organic reactions just name a reactions outside this uh, category either acid catalyzed, base catalyzed, light, heat, oxidation, reduction. Any other reactions known? You can say isomerization. Isomerization is a reaction, but it is a thermal thermal reaction. It is a thermal reaction, or it could be base catalyzed, it could be acid catalyzed. All these pericyclic reactions, all pericyclic reactions are thermally allowed or photochemically allowed. So no, that's it. So that means when you are not given any option here, okay, what do you expect? It is a thermal reaction. Okay, but in this particular case, the example is uh, this uh, uh, answer is BF3 uh, etherate. BF3 etherate, okay. BF3 etherate. So acid, so acid catalyzed, uh, basically acid catalyzed. Yes, acid catalyzed means normally, uh, if you don't have any nucleophile etc. etc. So thermal reactions are possible. So this is Diels solder is a, is a formal, Diels solder or any thermally allowed cyclo additions are possible. In this case, in our case there is a Diels solder, but you have to know that double bond of a double bond of double bond of of an aromatic system also can participate in the Diels solder reactions. Did, did you understand what I say? Probably you did not. Okay. Let me just uh, uh, let me just give you this um, reference reaction then you would be able to uh, just heat it what do you expect? This is the reference reaction for what I said that although deep seated double bonds they are seated within this uh, aromatic system they can also come out and react with uh, the dinophiles to form this Diels solder adduct. If that is so that means that uh, I am talking about this double bond actually this double bond belongs to the aromatic systems yet it is reactive as a double bond of the diene system. So, so product would be It is a Diels solder reaction, it is a product of the Diels solder reaction. In fact, such reactions are used in steroids. So, with this, right, and then what? Then isomerization. Then isomerization. So, this is just a basically an example. This is an example where a double bond of an aromatic system is participating in the Diels solder reactions of a diene, that means it forms the diene component, that is what is happening here. In this uh, previous example, what you see this double bond, this double bond is basically part of a diene system. So, this double bond and this double bond together they are double bond. Now, next important thing why did I choose uh, ethyl vinyl ether? I could have used normal dienophile, normal dienophile is uh, ethyl acrylate, acetylene dicarboxylic acid as ester. So, like this. But instead of choosing those, malic anhydride. 
but uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones instead of cho choosing those um, Michael acceptors or the dinophiles uh, I have chosen here ethyl vinyl ether guess uh, I would say the differently little differently uh, spe spe uh, not specificity okay right basically that is what you have to me see uh, I think uh, all of you have gone through I think those who are our MSc students have gone through so many physical chemistry courses right including those who have come from Calcutta University I know uh, they must have studied uh, the quantum chemistry quite a bit quantum chemistry ok. Uh, so, uh, just uh, very quickly now that you have to because what I am trying to say that we do a lot of things, but you have to screen out some of the things ok you have to uh, leave something you have to gain something. So, so you have to choose rightly selectively, uh, selectively. for example, uh, let us say how many of you know let, let me see how many of you are able to do the calculations of this one these two uh, only four electron system uh, who would be able to calculate the homo of this and homo of this raise hand. I know all of you have our MSc students have gone through uh, three or four quantum chemistry courses. Kosik, Bolo Kunal, Maji Jano, Siddhartha Maji, Bolo, Bolo. Okay. See uh, what I am trying to say. Uh, um, how do you calculate this uh, homo energy or lumo energy of butyrene? You know, just sit down, sit down. You do not have to stand. So, that is something that means, that means those courses are useless, it seems like. What I am trying to say, you have to know, you know, why do you study all these things? No, no, how much time would you take to do the calculation? No, no, how much time I said? If I give you uh, this problem to now, uh, how much time uh, you will take to complete this homo -luma calculation? of this one. No, okay, tell me what is the value? I want a number. Alpha plus 0 0.6 I want a number that is what I am trying to say. Okay. How much time would you take to calculate homo energy and lumo energy of your brain? Okay. Uh, just uh, very quickly. Uh, I mean although we do not do this practice right uh, for organic chemist we, oh, well, the practice is little different ok. Uh, like this when you go to this one if you re uh, replace C H 2 by nitrogen let us say uh, just give me the answer if you put the nitrogen there is the homo energy would be increased or decreased with respect to biodine by how much it will decrease that is that is the important point you have to remember that means that homo energy is getting decreased. So, that means your lumo energy sorry homo energy of I mean dino, dinophile so called dinophile should be increased that means there should be a balance basically the energy gap should be as minimum as possible then they will undergo reaction. Okay. If it is decreased then that should be increased and vice versa and so you have to have a compatibility. So, but we do not talk about all these things, what, but in the back in the mind we just remember that it, it uh, activity is uh, energy is reduced. Okay. So, that can be compensated by increasing the energy of the uh, two, co uh, 2 pi electron part in this case it is the ether and uh, most of you probably know this vinyl ether is an electron rich system, electron rich system because of the because of the lone pair conjugations with the you know, this pi electron. So, as you rightly said it is an example of inverse electron solar reactions. So, what is the product you will be getting? The product you will be getting and uh, so after isomerization all these things. Uh, so, what you will be getting? You will be getting this one getting this one and uh, mind it uh, in this case uh, what you see 
the ethoxide on this side, it could be on this position also, right. But once again, this, uh, this direction or the, the addition to this system is due to this uh, effect of this oxygen lone pair to this system. So, uh, then of course, uh, if you uh, just do a little bit of the synthetic manipulations, normally in this case, uh, paratoluene uh, P T S A, paratoluene sulfonic acid, you have to go, well then, okay. So, what you will find, uh, it will give you uh, this uh, reaction known, known as, uh, okay. So, uh, quinoline. So, the, and this particular reaction is known as uh, Povarov reaction. This particular reaction is known as the Povarov reaction. Still, continuing with this, uh, basically this uh, uh, Azadil solder reactions or Azadil solder reaction or uh, AGDA heterodial solder reactions. And uh, let me uh, just uh, very quickly uh, go to a very famous reaction. Uh, in this case, um, in this case, um, uh, the reacting reactants are cyclobutadiene and and amine. You can say considered to be an aliphatic amine, NH2, and the corresponding uh, salt, corresponding salt that is uh, HCl. Amines normally are purified uh, as HCl. Then, if you react to it formalin formalin so what you will get and this is just at a room temperature though at room temperature so what do you expect once again the, i mean this is within your capability means you, you, if you just uh, think about it seriously you can uh, tell me the right product but outcome is very interesting very interesting as very simple reaction because it is just mix them up at room temperature in water formalin means 30 percent formaldehyde and water 30 percent formaldehyde in water. So, what do you expect? First first immune formation. So, that means first uh, you would like to see that means as I said before immune formation also requires dehydration right dehydration, but it can be carried out uh, in presence of uh, in presence of uh, water, but in the presence of a catalyst and so what do you expect you will expect a this right. Now, uh, what, what do you uh, so obviously, uh, in this case uh, this one would undergo a dill solder reaction and this this would be uh, this nitrogen and the, uh, this should be I will write phenyl and a double bond that is it. That means, cyclopentadiene is now 4 electron component and uh, this is double electron. So, in this case this is basically a shift space that is what we talked about that is there are 3 different variants and this reaction is pretty well known very well known. Okay. Now, exactly same way uh, if you be begin with uh, a compound let us say I uh, will just give you uh, this, this is a very useful one that uh, imines and the corresponding dill solder products because what you end up you get a nice heterocycles with nitrogen of 1. Now, it is a bicyclic one now the, the double bond can be you know synthetically mani be manipulated in different manners. So, you can cleave it you can do all kinds of things. So, you get a nice cycle uh, um, so pyrolidinone pyrolidinone kind of pyrolidine kind of molecules. Let me give you one more interesting uh, example where you will have cyclohexenone and then and again an amine, again formalin. So, what you see here the co compositions are uh, for, sorry, formalin and little bit of DMSO is in this case added and uh, uh, temperature is little high, so uh, 50 degree. Then something else, uh, one of the other component is uh, S proline. S proline. Okay, so I think all of you understand what is okay. What are the things? 
I mean the way I have written the formalin is not a reactant, but it is a but it is a reactant, it is a reactant. So, what do you expect? Once again, one of the uh, what I said after acid base reactions, one of the fastest possible reactions is the formation of aminol. See, if you think about the reactions of an amine with an aldehyde or ketone, the very first step is a formation of aminol, addition of nitrogen to the carbonyl to form the alpha aminol. Okay. Those are pretty unstable, so it, uh, they stay in equilibrium with the Schiff's basis. So, that is one of the very fastest possible reactions in organic reactions. Now, that is what is happening here and between the two uh, you have all components here, you have an amine uh, formalin. So, uh, what you will find, you will find uh, one of these intermediates could be would be this nitrogen and the Schiff's base here. Right? That means, you have to then look for what? You have to look for something, you have to look for a diene. So, how cyclohexenone is not a diene? Right. So, not in all form exactly. So, what will this proline will form the inamine, will form the inamine that means, uh, the other portion would be uh, in this case uh, this one this one sorry uh, I think yes. So, this one would be this inamine inamine. Okay. Then uh, now you know that uh, this now now you can guess this is this become diene and this be, this is the dienophile component and this become the diene component. So, eventually I, I must you just uh, if you sit down and you can work out this uh, uh, work out this uh, problem uh, at home without much problem. Um, so, uh, eventually what will uh, get you will get a um, uh, again a bicyclic system and it is a ketone and then you have two methyl groups here. Uh, anything else? So, this is a bicyclic that means this diene part would react with this and mind it in this case because of this nitrogen this electron flow would be towards this carbon this is important also and this carbon would add to the imine carbon here imine carbon. So, that determines the regiochemistry part of the that determines the regiochemistry part of this one. So, <coughs> anything else Vivekananda anything else? This is important. I am writing, you are writing, that is not a problem. You have to see what are the other things uh, we, we would like to convey, what message we like to convey. It is a case of organo catalysis, organo catalysis, and, and the EE is 99 percent. So, 99 percent. So, I mean, so there are, so I mean, uh, other reactions may be. I mean, let us say. I think I, 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 I would I would talk about one more reactions uh, in this area. Mm, uh, this is a very interesting area, though, uh, interesting chemistry. Um, many of you, uh, this is actually it's pretty similar to a kind of a dienophile called um, sorry diene uh, called Danisevsky diene. Danisevsky diene. Do you remember the structure of diene to diene? It is a diene. Uh, what you will see is you have double bond, you have a double bond. What is the, what is the, what are the features of the diene to diene? What are the features of the diene to diene? It is a bit second position. Second position is occupied by either by nitrogen or oxygen, but normally it is oxygen. So, in this case and you have the silicon here and this. And the other one is this, and you have a methoxy here. What is the normal example? You have to have a dienophile with the carbons, with the carbons. That is that is the standard example. That is the standard example. But what is known that uh, if you uh, react with again the shift space, uh, uh, the standard shift space, because this is easy to work with, fairly stable, and you can isolate. 
and uh, you can work with. Now, uh, one, can, one could have written also the differently or the same thing right this, but uh, this is not a feasible I mean both are same though, but in for the re for the reaction with this one this orientation is uh, appropriate reason being reason being you have again this oxygen lone pair. So, this lone pair of electron and directs the uh, electrons to this carbon and by virtue of this nitrogen electronegativity uh, these electrons are polarized towards nitrogen. So, you, you get this one as a positive charge and this one a negative charge and then then combine. So, eventually what you will get uh, you will get uh, a, a reaction product where you will have the silicon up here and nitrogen phenyl and phenyl and then you have this O methoxy O methoxy right. What, what next? And since silylithers, most of you know, are very again very sensitive to acids. Just if you do the column, column chromatography or do a little bit of acidic workup, even in ammonium chloride, uh, it will break. So, uh, again, this enolize and methanol will come out. So, what you will find? You will find this double bond here and say nitrogen, and then phenyl and phenyl. So, what do you get? You get an heterocycle, it is a heterocycle, heterocycle now with a chiral center with a chiral center okay. and uh, believe me or not it, it, I mean it took so many years to develop a new reactions on the basis of this reaction and uh, again this is due to a ch the Chinese guy um, in this case. And uh, the, uh, what they did, they used sorry. Once again, uh, they used uh, this uh, Danishevsky diene and this um, aldehyde and then corresponding amine is I, I do not know I mean uh, I got surprised to see you know that such a simple reaction was published in only 2002 not long ago in Orglet. The Danishevsky has been known since 1978, 1978 that was the first was Jack's publication. Okay. But is and the, the, that the example I showed you before apparently is workable, right? That was also known, but this reaction was not known. It's such a simple reaction. What do you do here? Just as they don't separate them, uh, uh, they don't separately uh, prepare the Schiff's base uh, with aldehydes and amines. Just they mix up all the three components together, and that too in a solvent like uh, one of the very cheap solvents, uh, methanol. Methanol and no heating nothing no catalyst just uh, room temperature just room temperature and what you get you get the corresponding adduct corresponding I, I one of them of course that means what you uh, is basically what you get is uh, four pyridone right it's a four pyridone derivative it's a four pyridone derivative you'll have uh, this one and Then this, uh, of course, uh, this portion, and then uh, this is this will have a definite uh, stereochemistry here, and this is chemistry, of course, and the other isomer also has been formed. But that's not a uh, major important. That means that's ratio is somewhat unpredictable, though. But um, but what you can get, just uh, very, uh, if you have a component of this kind, and uh, very easily you can uh, uh, make this. A simple reactions that means you have to have nice uh, formulation and um, you have you could generate a nice stereochemistry, actually stereochemistry uh, at two different centers and may, many of you know probably uh, this one this aldehyde is easily obtainable from is easily obtainable from where any guess uh, very good D, how do you make D manitol and 
सी डबल सी डबल हाँ प्रोडक्शन एंड 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 व्हाट यू डू द प्रोडक्शन देन व्हाट सोडियम पाराइड्रेट राइट सो दैट्स इट सोडियम दैट यू क्लिक कर सो इट्स वेरी इजी ओके एंड द लास्ट रिएक्शन दिस इज दिस इज प्रेडी इंटरेस्टिंग रिएक्शन दो I have just one more minute. So uh, this is just something like again. Uh, this one, I say, uh, and then you uh, take an aldehyde. Then pyrrolidine. I think all of you can guess. Pyrrolidine. So. Just simply, I think uh, that there is actually a catalyst. In this case, this catalyst is little less a sort of a, uh, it's a boron catalyst. A boron catalyst here. So basically, it's a Lewis acid kind of Lewis acid kind of thing. Uh, oh, sorry, this I think uh, I made a mistake here. This should be pyrrolidine, known pyrrolidine. This should be pyrrolidine. So what do you expect? Okay, better, better I write uh, separately. Uh, so this, now uh, just like a BF3. In this case, it is not the BF3. It is a dibora compound, a dibora compound, and just uh, heat it, and heat it. So what do you expect? Uh, expectation. Right, right. So that means uh, first, this enamine formation would be actually I should have written C H two up here, uh, C H two. So uh, I think better I write C H here, C H two. That is better. So you first from the enamine. So in this and uh, what is the name of this molecule? This is a famous molecule. Sorry, thala. See six member nitrogen compound. So name should be. Gin, so th uh, it comes from thalic acid kind of thing, so it is known as th thalagin. Okay, and mind it. In this case, you get this enamine done, not the shift space. So you have to have enamine. Reason being, when you have one nitrogen is electron deficient, you have two more and two nitrogens, it even becomes more deficient. So that electron deficiency has to be compensated by the other part, and in this case, the enamine. Enamine is electron rich. By virtue of interaction of the lone pair nit nitrogen lone pair with the double bond, so the end product here after a little bit of this work, what you will find uh, this R just naphthalene. It's a reverse way now. Heterocycles are being used for synthesis of carbocycles. 